Hello and good afternoon, Xbox Nation. Welcome to this week's new episode of X Vlog Live. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And as you can see, well, I have a new guest co host for today, as C Money is in Boston with the Iron Lords and Ham Solo and the rest of those crazy crew. Uh, enjoying themselves i probably should have went mrs boom actually kind of read me the riot act she's like i don't understand why you didn't go to this all your friends were going to be there shame on you so i will be going next year because mrs boom says i need to go and she's not wrong she's definitely not wrong uh but jamie moran ah man so great to have you here you're my co-host we got three big topics to get into uh you got some evil west on your screen folks i'm telling you right now Please, for the love of Joe, play this game. It is in Game Pass. It is available today. The game is Gears of War meets Vampires and Werewolves. It is awesome. But, Jamie, it's even more awesome that you're here. How you doing? Yeah, happy to be here. It's uh, It's been a while. It's been a few weeks, I think. Uh, I'm just interested to talk about all the things that's been going on because uh, – some of the topics I think I'm going to get a bit hated about. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and you know something? Again, there's there's not a lot of news, but there is some ongoings. And I think that when you do five live streams a week, you you, you got to do your due diligence as as a host to bring interesting conversation. And I think that the three topics we're going to get we're going to talk about, everyone is going to enjoy. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. But I'm glad you're here. Yeah, happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Well, listen, let's let's get right into it, folks. Um, I want to talk about Game Pass because I think that when you look at what is currently happening with uh, with Game Pass, you, there's no denying like it's 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 basically undeniable that you are not a part of this service. Um, they have especially specifically this month alone, they have released a ton of games already. But what we got the other day, and this was tweeted out by, of course, the official Xbox Game Pass uh, Twitter account. It says, uh, "Woo, yeah, lots of woos in this in this tweet." But folks, let's let's break down, Jamie, what they have coming to the service starting today, moving forward towards the end of the month, which of course is only uh, you know ten days away. You got um, uh, uh, you you got the 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 F one twenty three is in there out of ea play the quarry which is another phenomenal game that you need to play evil west is what's on your screen now folks i'm telling you please if you have game pass if you like gears of war if you like werewolves and vampires and monsters you gotta try this game it is a hidden gem many people passed on it I went back to it. I had bought it when it first came out. It's phenomenal. I'm going to beat it now. I obviously got the urge to play, which, of course, is why I, was, I, you only, I only got 45 minutes of, of footage. But I'm going to, of course, add some to that. You got uh, the uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged Edition. That will be releasing soon. You have an indie game called The Open Roads. Uh, another indie game that is well very popular, Super Hot. Mind Control Delete Edition. You have Ark uh, Survival Ascended. You got Diablo 4 on the 28th. And Terra Invicta, which I'm not sure what that is. It's on Game Preview on PC Game Pass. Um, I, it, I, I'm not sure if it's a, it's, a, it's a survival game. I'm not sure if it's an RTS. Certainly not so much for me. But, Jamie, look, I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, when you consider that... This is for the rest of March, right? Which is, again, we got 10 days left. You're getting all of these games. They've already had a ton of games come out. May is around the corner. You got Hellblade 2. You got Avowed. You got Indiana Jones. You got Towerborn. You got a ton of stuff coming on top of third party, second party deals, and indie games. I don't know, man. I, it, it, it makes, for, again, I, I don't get a dollar every time I say Game Pass. I wish I did because I would say it a lot. You know, help, help, help us fund our, our house, Mrs. Boom and I. But, you know, obviously Microsoft doesn't pay me to say it. But as a consumer, as a fan of Xbox, as someone that, you know, has a great pension but does have a ceiling, this is a service I don't think you can deny. I mean, again, not every game is going to be for you on this list, and I understand that. But man, Jamie, hard to deny what they're doing with Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, all genres are covered. So, like, you have JRPGs dropping one month. This month, you have the the Quarry. I think's the big, big one. I love the Quarry. Uh, excellent horror game. 
uh, you know, Evil West, it's a mix between Gears and God of War. Uh, you're hunting vampires. A lot of people ignored that when it came out because it released between a, a bunch of busy games, but it's a great month. And look, like you said, like I, I wish I got paid for the amount of times I talk about Game Pass. Uh, but the truth is, like I think it's valuable. It's, it's a great service. You know, we live in an age where these publishers are thinking about raising the prices of games to eighty dollars. Uh, so like the value you get is ridiculous. And I put it like this: when Game Pass first came out. I didn't subscribe to it because back when there was 100 games there, I had nearly all of them. So I never really thought there was any reason to subscribe. But now when there's like over like 500 games there, I feel the need to subscribe. Like it's it's a necessary subscription to me, much like Disney Plus or and Netflix. Well, Netflix occasionally, but it's a great month. And, you know, Microsoft, none of their first party games released till May. So like they obviously like they hype up the, the Game Pass stuff and Game Pass is a big part of Xbox. So like, I think them having a few great months in a row for Game Pass, it's great for everyone. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, like I said, um, all you got to do is look at your screen. You're going to see uh, this This game looks phenomenal. It runs phenomenal. Uh, it has very, it has very uh, Gears of War-esque uh, you know, uh, uh, aspects to it. Uh, again... It may not be, maybe it's not your bag, and if it's not, I, I hear you. Um, but there are a lot of stuff to get uh, to get uh, to get excited about. And what one of the things, Jamie, that I think are pretty incredible is they still advertise this as over 100 games, and we know that there's over 500 games, and it continues to grow. We get a lot of shadow drops, we get a lot of surprises, especially coming out of the uh, out of the west. And you made, made mention of it, you said JRPGs. That's a thing. As a matter of fact, who was it in the chat that just said this? I mean, let me make give them the credit where credit is due. Um, let me see if I can find it. Someone had made mention. I, 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 if I was, give me another, you know, another message in there because I, I this the chat is going crazy. That she had the 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 Persona DLC drop into Xbox Game Pass for free, like it's just one of the perks. And again, I, I'm not a Persona guy, uh, not at all. But if you are a Persona person and you were looking to buy the DLC, well, you don't have to because it's one of the perks. That, Jamie, is something I want to see them do a little bit more of. I want to see more of the perks uh, be better than some of the stuff that there's. Because a lot of the perks, eh, they're free-to-play stuff. They're like a weapon. They're a skin. And it's for games that I don't play. So a lot of the times, it's it doesn't really, uh, you know, it doesn't equate with me. Um but I am going to say that you made mention of JRPGs. That is a thing that seems to be uh, finding its way to uh, to Game Pass on a regular basis. And I, I think that's a giant win, especially if you are a fan of the genre. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a big advocate for JRPGs on Xbox. So, like, it, it's great to see. And plus, it, it really benefits everyone, these JRPGs coming to Game Pass. So, like... And I will take every opportunity to push Square Enix down the sca- down the stairs. <laughs> so this is my opportunity. Uh, you know, Sega made the right decision partnering with Xbox a few years ago by, you know, Yakuza is coming to Xbox. So they bought Yakuza Zero to Game Pass and it gave the fans a taste of the, the franchise. And then they bought the rest of the Yakuza games. And by the, the, the end of the next year, the brand new Yakuza game, it wasn't in Game Pass but it still sold well on Xbox because they created a a Yakuza fan base on the console, you know, which there never was before. And they did the same with Persona last year. You know, Persona 5 launched in Game Pass. It was a big deal, uh, 3 and 4. And this year with the remake, huge deal. And the Persona 3 remake is bloody fantastic. Uh, And the fact that the DLC is also going to be in Game Pass as a perk is great. And if you live in the UK... The perks in Game Pass aren't that good. <laughs> uh, it's it's like, you know, you get some gems for a free-to-play game and all that stuff. Uh, so to have an expansion, uh, which launches later this year, that's a huge deal. And uh, I think it's just... The, the Persona fan base on Xbox is getting bigger by the day because of the moves they've made with Sega. And it's just going to benefit everyone in the end one because people will say there's no grpg fans on xbox and the truth is there is but they need to be exposed to the ip in the correct way and has to be marketed yep. and via game pass game pass gets all the marketing so um it's it's just great to say and plus i love the fact that now we're getting expansions 
in Game Pass. I think the last expansion we got in Game Pass Ultimate was uh, Gears of War 5 Hive Busters. Yes. Which was phenomenal. Uh, so I love the fact they're doing this, and I hope they continue to do this. So, hey, Hargeet Chani, what's going on, Hargeet? Hopefully you're enjoying Boston. He's out there also with uh, King David and the Iron Lords hanging out uh, at GD. I would say GDC at, uh, at uh, PAX East. Uh, I've been to three. I will say this. Um, PAX East is an amazing fan show. And the the three times that I actually went out there, I didn't have a channel. I went out there just as, as a fan. And now, well, I have a YouTube channel. I think I'm going to try and get there next year as press. I'm going to give it the old college effort, see if they, uh, they acknowledge the channel, which would be pretty dope if they did. I know a lot of people got acknowledged, which is great because obviously you want to see more content creators out there. And uh, Mrs. Woman push is pushing me out the doors. So I'm definitely going next year for sure. Um, let's see. Who was it here? It was... Oh, my God. This chat is flying. Hold on just a second. Because um, King Webb is the one that said it. King Webb, welcome to the program. As always, brother, super appreciate it. He said, Jamie, that there are over 700 games. And... I, again, I said 500. I'm 200 off. If there are 700 games for 16.99 a month, I mean, can can you beat that? But with the positive, we got to back in this with some 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 questions as how they move this forward because I think that you know a lot of the times Xbox content creators get accused of only capping when there's good news and never criticizing xbox well you criticize xbox when it's necessary and i know that we do that here and we don't do it for rhetoric we don't do it for clicks we don't do it because we want to make other people mad we do it because we're asking like legit questions and then my, my and and my my caveat to the positivity about game pass because there's a lot to really like here jamie it's the question of the marketing because how many people do you folks know please by all means in the chat let's get involved in here let's have a conversation xbox has a marketing problem and as great as uh game pass is and it is phenomenal we went over the reasons why it is there are 700 reasons why game pass is incredible from games that you've never played that you that you didn't realize you needed in your life and here they are Games that are AAA bombs that would cost you seventy six forty three if you walked into GameStop or Walmart or Target. It's in your service, or you know you find it on the store. You're not paying full boat. If you decide to buy it, you're saving ten percent. If it's on its way out, some I think they give you an additional ten. They make they kind of like, hey, it's twenty percent off. Buy it, and you go and you buy the game before it leaves. Uh, all first party games stay in there forever, unlike something like, for instance, Sony. When Spider-Man 2 was on the way out uh, and it was going to be released, what did they do? They pulled Spider-Man 2018 out of the PlayStation Store. I mean, out of out of your, your PlayStation Plus library. Why? Because they want to make money and the people went out and bought, you know, their combo pack where you got Spider-Man 2018, you got Miles Story and Spider-Man 2. That, that's kind of shitty. I'm going to be honest with you. So, um, you know, Microsoft doesn't do that. Um, but I do want to kind of talk about what they need to do to be better for the common person because Xbox is in third place, folks. No surprise. They're in the third place. They're making the most money, but they're third place in the console platform race, right? Um, depending on who you ask or depending on what day of the week it is, it's PlayStation with their or, or, or it's Nintendo because Nintendo is – selling consoles just as good or even better than than PlayStation is. But it's PlayStation, it's Nintendo, it's Xbox. So they're in they're in third place. And it's fine. I don't actually think they mind being there because they are making a shit ton of money. But the question Jamie that I have for you is Hellblade is coming out in under 2 months at this point. Um we haven't seen the marketing ramp up for it. We might get a developer's direct. We, again, that's we don't know, right? That they, they might do it next month. They haven't said anything. There's been no rumors of it. But the question, Jamie, that I have for you is, man, they, they need to be better letting people know about Game Pass because, again, we're in an era 
where everyone in this chat, we have over nearly 500 people here, have a ton of subscriptions, whether it's Netflix and Hulu, whether it's HBO, uh, whether it's Max, whether it's, you know, pick your favorite service, Peacock, Paramount, you name it. We, we all have that. We have them in spades. So subscribing to a service isn't foreign for people. I don't think they do a good enough job selling selling Game Pass. What, what are your thoughts on it? How could they be better on that? Well, I don't think Xbox does a good job marketing in general anymore. Um, yeah. Like, no. Let's just talk about Game Pass for a moment. I, I think Microsoft, they only really market Game Pass when it's probably close to a lot of people needing to resubscribe. So if you look at Xbox Live Gold, if you remember when we used to get four games each month, we used to get about one month per year that had really good games. And it was always around April. And I always gathered from that was like, maybe that's when, like I'd say, I'm just making up a number, like 70% of the Xbox Live Gold members needed to resub. So they gave people a, a bigger incentive. Well, Microsoft kind of do that with Game Pass, but for marketing, some months they go all out in the UK for marketing. And then like the rest of the year, they don't bother. And I think it's weird because it's the best service. It really is. You know, um, there's people that don't even know about Game Pass, and that's the scary part because you have like the price of games going up. People complain about live service and all that type, all that stuff. But you have Game Pass that has over like 700 games, most of which are single player, and they don't talk about it. And like Microsoft, they do this with the console as well. Like one of the things I talk about on YouTube and on, on Twitter is the backwards compatibility stuff. And there's many people I talk to all the time in real life that have no idea that Xboxes are backwards compatible. And I have to tell them that. There's people I have to tell weekly online that certain games are backwards compatible. That's why I post about them on Twitter. Uh, because Microsoft, they have this shiny like next-gen console, the Xbox Series X and the S, and they don't say what the console does on the box. They say it does 4K. They say it does 120 frames per second, but it doesn't say anywhere on the box saying, hey, you can play Call of Duty Black Ops and GTA 4 on this box. It doesn't say any of that. It doesn't say that you can uh, uh, you have resolution enhanced games. It doesn't say that you can play Mad Max at 120 frames per second. It doesn't say that. And they do the thing, they do the same with Game Pass, where most people in the gaming space don't exist. And then you have places like IGN where they were live and they were talking about how only small games go into Game Pass. And that's just not true. And when it comes to Hellblade, I I I see Microsoft do this thing where they do the, the Warner Brothers games approach where they don't talk about the game at all. And then a month before launch, that's when they start marketing the game. By the way, I don't agree with that. I don't think companies should just wait for a month beforehand. Um, I agree. So like Hogwarts yeah. Legacy, biggest game last year, they didn't talk about the game outside of trailers until a month before launch. And that fortunately it worked out well for them, despite all the drama. But like, look at last year with Starfield. We didn't hear a peep about Starfield, not really, until a month before launch. So I think if it gets to like the beginning of April and then they don't talk about it, then there's an issue. But I do think they will have like a developer direct about it. And if they don't, they're stupid. But like Microsoft, despite all the fudge you see online and people making tweets about like how angry they are at Microsoft all the time. And like, despite Microsoft having like horrible marketing at the minute, Microsoft's in the best place they've ever been when it came to the, the consumers because the, there's more content coming to the console than ever before. There's more first-party games in development than ever before. There's more third-party games coming to the console than ever before. And that includes Japanese titles. So while things can be better, it's still good. But again, the marketing thing, they need to improve on. Yeah, I agree. I mean, listen, again, we're, we're not... We're not complaining right to just be jerks about it I, I i again we don't get paid for my by microsoft hell I, hell i don't even get controllers right like you you would think if they're going to send somebody a controller it would be me they don't uh i i actually have my fallout controller i'm gonna do like a little bit of a mini unboxing i'm gonna try and put it up as a short if you care check it out i'm gonna do it after um it, it's it's i i got the vasco uh pop which i bought you know uh i i don't i don't listen you know the truth of the matter is, folks, I don't want nothing for free. I buy everything. Not rich, but I buy my stuff and I'm happy for it. It's it's fine. I don't need Microsoft to put me on the, the good guy list so I can get free controllers and, and do a tweet. That's fine. I haven't gotten free anything from them yet. I'm not going to get it. Start now. 
But I do want to see them do better with the marketing, and and it's a glaring issue. Like I, like I said, I I think that when you if you're going to be a fair uh, content creator, if you want to talk about good and you want to talk about the positive, and there's a lot to get excited about. As a matter of fact, tomorrow's show uh, on Breakfast with Boom is going to be packed with positivity. Jez Corden is super excited for the future hardware. He's also super excited about the future first party games. He put it out in the tweet. Very subtle, but Jez Corden, he has the connections. Again, I say this about Jez all the time. I know him personally. I consider him to be the tip of the spear when it when you talk about uh, journalistic integrity. Uh, he's one of my favorite journals out there. I love Windows Central, and I'm not blowing smoke up his ass, folks. He's definitely, but 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 I will say he's somebody I trust. So tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a packed panel, and it's going to be a lot of Xbox positivity because there is a lot to get excited about, especially because well, we're in 2024, the future. We'll get there eventually, but I think that this year, I I know that it didn't it didn't you know the, the rumor thing kind of dampered a lot of people's spirits, and I get it. I understand people were you know very disappointed with the way the messaging has been not so great, but there's still a lot to get excited about. But I do want to move along, Jamie, uh, to the next topic. But before we get there. Let me welcome in 530 people here. Of course, I want to say, if you're just finding the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. Uh, that would be pretty dope if you do subscribe. I do this Monday through Friday. Five great panels, all different shows. And, uh, you know, we don't sell hate and we don't sell FUD to get you to sub or check it out. Um, also, please, while you're here, hit the like button. That would be pretty dope of you as well. It, we, it doesn't cost anything. I know some people act as if it does. Just hit the bell icon. If you want to be, of course, notified and, and and hit the like button while you're here. Simon Brandy, generous friends of the program, drops an outstanding five pound super chat and says, boom. Do you recall the Xbox One S up the clock speed? Maybe the Series X digital has a higher clock speed. That would be better compromised than a pro. OK, so with the pro, we talked about it last night, primetime. For me personally, I think it's my Xbox dodged a bullet. I really think that they don't need a pro. I think Sony uh, needs a I, Honestly, Sony has a great machine. The PlayStation 5 is a phenomenal machine. Do I think that they actually needed a pro? Not really. I, I don't think that they did, but they did. They wanted the pros coming out, at least supposedly according to the leaks, that's coming out this summer. I mean, uh, th this fall, great. Uh, I'm glad Xbox didn't do that. Uh, they don't need to do that. What they're doing is the right move. They are going to jump Sony by at least a year, potentially two. And that would be the two consoles that, again, apparently, according to uh, the rumors, they have two consoles coming out in 2026. I think that's the better move. Uh, the, but, but in regards to your Super Chat, Xbox hasn't really even used all of the power. In the, uh, they're going to, with Hellblade, but they haven't used all the power for that console. I think there is a lot of headroom left for us to enjoy. And I think uh, in May, when we get Hellblade 2, we're really going to see what that thing can do. Um, but thanks for the super chat, brother. Uh, Abdel114, who's been a channel member for six months. And thank you so much for the consistent de generosity, brother. We super appreciate that here. He says, Ronin has a 76 Metacritic versus Wulong, which has an 80. Uh, there goes Pony's argument that Game Pass diminishes quality. A day one Game Pass title scoring higher at than seventy dollars exclusive TTS. Yeah, I saw that. I saw some of the really higher reviews. I had it pre-ordered, uh, and I buy all my stuff for PlayStation. It's weird. I, I for PlayStation and Switch, I buy it physical. Uh, it's weird. I, but for everything I buy, I, for everything Xbox, I buy. I buy. You know, I buy digital. I think that's just in case I have to sell my stuff. At least I have stuff to sell. And PlayStation does retain some of its value. Not as much as Switch, though. Um, I mean, I, I had it pre-ordered. I had the Deluxe Edition pre-ordered. I canceled it. Uh, I'm not, I, I will buy this. I will buy this game in the fall when it's half price. Uh, same thing with uh, Stellar Blade. I was going to buy it. I'm not buying it uh, because there are too many games to play. And, and Dragon's Dogma comes out tomorrow. So I'm, my, my time is going to be uh all for that um but let's let's move on to 
Now, Jamie, this is the one I think you're gonna you're you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit of uh, a snarky snarkiness. Uh, me too. So, PC Gamer, right, is a digital publication that made it their business to dump on Starfield, right? That's what they did. They gave it a seven. And as we know, they went and they did, I don't know, Jamie, 10, 15, 20, 30 tweets, uh, letting everyone know that Starfield for, by, from Bethesda is a seven. So right now, outside of PAX, GDC 2024 is happening. That is the game or uh, that that is uh that is an event where developers from all around the world converge that, you know. Have uh, you know? Show off their wear, show off things that they're working. Talk with one another. Uh, gamers developers conf- conference, as it's known, right? Games the games development development con- uh, conference. Um, and they put out a article, Jamie, yesterday. Uh, and the title of this article is Starfield lead quest designer had absolutely no time and had to hit the panic button so the game would have a satisfying final quest. So I'm clicking on it, and I know that I shouldn't, but of course, I I, I want to, you know, if I'm going to use an article, folks, I, I got to be legit. I got to at least tell you who wrote it. And, you know, I'm not going to give you a place to find it. I'm just not going to do that. But I will at least give credit because I am using someone's work. I want to be fair. Uh, and it was written uh, by Christopher Livingston. He uh, was published yesterday. And he has some quotes here uh, from the from people at, who working on the game, uh, and they say it became very clear that we were missing a large final location that was going to tie into the story, tie the story together. Says former lead quest designer Will Shen. Um, and so you're asking yourself, boom, why why are we talking about this? Starfield sold very well. Uh, it's played by millions of people. Um, it's currently only on Xbox and PC. We have a DLC releasing Shattered Space this year. Uh, they've done a tremendous amount of upgrades uh, to many of the things. Hopefully, we get um, uh, some sort of a rover or or a hoverboard or something to kind of make traveling better. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things they're going to be adding. The game is definitely going to look different. Uh, this year and the next year and the year after that, it's going to be a totally different game, very similar to Skyrim, Jamie. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because the negativity does not seem to stop with this game. Uh, and I brought it. I, I, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this, right? So I, I, I'm just, I'm just, we're having a conversation. I brought it up because prominent people in the industry had a problem. With this story. So I'm going to go first to Mike Yabara. Now, Mike Yabara, obviously, we all know he's former Microsoft employee, former head of Blizzard. Uh, he's now moved on to whatever he's going to move on to. We don't know what he's doing because he hasn't announced it. And uh, Mike Yabara says this I really dislike this article. These are incredible designers at GDC explaining what most ev- uh, what what almost every big game goes through, outlining where they think they and the industry can do better, and it gets and it gets weaponized in a way to criticize them and the game. It's it's clear intent. It's sad. So uh, a good friend of the community, I would even dare say, great friend of uh, of the community, and great friend of mine, Ains. Uh, uh, from uh, let me see, uh, from um, seasoned gaming, and of course, who doesn't like that dude? That guy's amazing. I met him at uh, E3 2019. I actually had a drink with him, and, and uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, Ains says, "I'm glad you called that out, Mike." All right? So again, Ains, pr- pretty pr- prominent person in the industry, I, I, and I'm glad that he that he seconded it. So I went and I said, "You know what? Let's see who else is talking about this." So Miles Toast, or well, it's not Toast, it's Miles Tost, T-O-S-T. Uh, who who is this? Who is this this fine gentleman? Uh, well, Miles is a level design lead, and he says on his on again, I'm reading this verbatim from his Twitter uh, account, clown at CD Project Red. He's worked on The Witcher 3, 
He's worked on Cyberpunk 2077, and he's currently working on the next Witcher game, which, of course, crazy impressive. So he goes on to say, Jamie, I find it discouraging that events of reflection and learning are being misused for sensationalist game journalism. This talk about self-reflection and lessons learned regarding the difficulties studios face when scaling up to tackle increasingly more ambitious projects. Uh, and he's a thousand percent. So Paris, Lily, and who doesn't know and like Paris, because Paris is a good dude. He actually goes on to say the self-reflection and lessons learned are what is most important. For what it's worth, I appreciate the insight into game development. So, of course, uh, Pixelbit G, who was a guest on our show last night, Jamie, uh, he says, uh, you know, and obviously he's a tech guy. He understands a lot of the X's and O's when it comes to making video games. And he responded as well. He says, I can't say that I'm all surprised from this org. It's sad that they can't be banned from access to these events to avoid them purposely painting something in common in development negativity. All projects have takeaways and lessons learned. And I, again, you know, PC game, PC gamer, they're, they're owned in the same company as IGN. This is not a surprise. This is probably a story, Jamie, that you're not going to find on many other podcasts, but I thought it was important because once again, they're beating the horse of, of, uh, you know, Starfield being this horrible game. What, what is the deal? It's an easy target. You know, whenever we see anyone from like IGN or GameSpot or anything talk about Starfield, they always refer to it as a controversial game. But whenever anyone asks why is it a controversial game, nobody can answer. It's like this forced narrative about the game because the game came out. It was the least buggiest Bethesda RPG ever. And when it came out, it actually lived up to what they promised the game would be. You know, it wasn't a Ubisoft bait and switch. The game was feature complete, and everything that we were shown during E3 was what we got at launch. Uh, but I think it was weird because you have you have all these journalists that came out of the woodwork last September and said, oh, the, the, the Bethesda RPG formula is getting old. But I find it funny how the Bethesda RPG formula has always been the same pretty much, but the straw that broke the camel's back was the one that was Xbox exclusive. You know, that... That to me screams like there's a there's a very particular reason why the, the journalists are going for the game, and like look at all these articles that have came out this year. There's been next to no big gaming news, like not like you know traditionally, it's all been negative Xbox news, and negative Xbox news gets the most clicks. It really does, yeah, because a uh, PC game or IGN they put out an article. It's negative about Xbox. You have Xbox fans trying to defend the, the console. You have PlayStation fans attacking them, and it all just gets clicks. And it's like it's rage baiting, and rage baiting doesn't work like that with Nintendo or PlayStation, but with Xbox it does because even though Microsoft actually has a first party roadmap this year, uh, they still get attacks. And like, is this an Xbox tax thing? I mean, that's a debate for another day, but it's crystal clear that they, they're going for like. During GDC, was there really any reason to go at Starfield when developers are meant to be celebrating each other, talking about technology? Yes, and, and yes, and they didn't do that. And like Starfield is like I play a lot of video games. I've played sci-fi video games my entire life. Starfield is impressive. We we live in a world where we have these video games now, where you have and No Man's Sky does this. This isn't just Starfield, but we live in a world where we have these video games where you have planets orbiting actual stars with moons that orbit those planets and you can fly and land on those things. To me, that's bloody amazing. And you have GDC being all about developers and you have like PC Gamer, which you said is an IGN company. It, it, sadly, it doesn't surprise me and they trash. But um, like people need to stop giving them clicks and they need to be called out on it because again, GDC isn't a place where, it's not an event where people should be turning into console war stuff. And what I saw yesterday was just a massive pile of console war base, and it was yeah. sickening, really. Yep. Yeah, it's it's disappointing because look, 
we have 600 people here in the chat, according to uh, what StreamYards is telling me, right? Now, maybe half of you loved Starfield. Maybe half of you hated Starfield. Okay. I mean, listen, not every game is for every gamer, but it's pretty apparent and very obvious that and again I, I get it folks when you say xbox tax people immediately equate that you wearing some sort of a tinfoil hat why why are you guys talking about this again it's ridiculous well if you don't call out the bias and it just continues to fester then i think that you're actually and i say we as a community would be a part of the problem why are they continuing to pick on this game? The game came out last year. It won a couple of war awards. It didn't win, it, it didn't sweep like I honestly thought it was. The game is incredibly ambitious. And again, it's for me, it's my one of my favorite Bethesda games of all time. Uh, it, it it just there is so much to do. And if you are an end game gamer, where I've seen people run through this thing six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And every time they've run through it a different time, there's a different, I mean, like vastly different outcome where, right? Like, for instance, you know, uh, you know what? I don't even want to give you any of the spoilers because some of them are so outrageous that you're like, I can't believe this. Don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. But there are so many different variations of what you played to what you're playing in the end game it's it's bananas but the the the, the, the your initial playthrough i still think is incredibly important i find it to be very unprofessional that during something like gdc like what jamie just said you're there to celebrate your your uh, your your compatriots right like your other developers i mean they're all friends right people that work at sony have friends that work at xbox and that work at Nintendo, and that work on PC only games, right? They're 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 now maybe not everyone gets along, and that's that's life, right? That's that's such as life. But to see the consistent Jamie, uh, every time that there is a lull in, let's say for instance, cl it's clicks. IGN is 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 definitely a part of this problem. GameSpot, Kotaku, PC Gamer. Whenever there is a lull in getting uh engagement you know what let's just dump on xbox we're gonna get it and that's what has happened here yeah i mean look i, I think a lot of people know this that at the beginning of the year uh, ad revenue across the board especially websites that you know they need clicks uh the ad revenue is at its lowest so like clickbait is at an all-time high and like really think about it outside of all the xbox rumors in january that there really hasn't been any major stories you know not yeah. like in the past where like oh microsoft randomly bought activision or like certain studios got bought up like there's not been like these huge stories you've had aspire crap the bread crap the bed with uh, the star yeah. wars battle for the classic collection which oh wow uh you know that was a mess you have these studios shutting down and that's not really being talked about, but you have like, oh, Hi-Fi rushes out on PlayStation. Let's talk about that and like give it better scores. <laughs> like, it's just rage baiting is the ultimate form of getting clicks. Like, uh, one of the reasons why I like Windows Central, even though it's a very Microsoft focused website, they are fairly, and I'd say very, you know, honest. But if you go to IGN or GameSpot or any of those websites, like, it's just, it's terrible. Like, it's, it's all rage baiting. And like I, I try to keep away from it. It's got to the point now where I don't actually read mainstream game media news, and I don't think anyone could blame us because it's 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 awful writing. Again, yeah. I love GDC because I like learning about gaming technology, and to see like fanboy console war stuff come from that, it's crazy. Like especially with all the you know Captain America and Black Panther stuff that came uh, out yesterday. I want to get into that. Yeah, that 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 dropped yesterday uh, uh at at GDC as a matter of fact and holy cow does that game look amazing. Yeah, like my my brain melted. That looks fantastic and like what do we say? Oh, Starfield is crap. Like <laughs> like we can't catch a break and it's like it feels like there's a negative Starfield topic every every month. If you if you type Starfield into YouTube it's just rage bait videos. It's people saying, I played Starfield again and it's crap. And 
I think that like <laughs> for some reason, like Starfield is like this big like target for some reason. Like it's it's the first Bethesda RPG in a while that has only been on Xbox. And yeah, that clearly bothered a lot of people. Yet you'll see some of these people, they'll put out like there'll, there'll be like someone on Reddit that will hear a moth fart in the wind and say, Hey, Starfield's coming to PlayStation. And people will run will, will run with that. Articles will be made saying, Hey, Starfield may be coming to PlayStation. And all of a sudden they love that game. But until then, which I don't think will happen, but until then, uh, it, we're just gonna see this wave every month of like negative xbox news and it, like starfield again is an easy target for some reason because it's a bethesda rpg it's disappointing uh like i said i mean listen i i love the game for me i it was my game of the year uh for a lot of reasons um and it's one of my favorite bethesda games it's just disappointing um when this kind of stuff happens but i think where you see the rubber hit the road so to speak jamie is when industry movers and shakers like who i read mike yabara paris lily the, the guy from uh the witcher studio um cd project red when you start to see their own peers or people in the industry get out there and talk about it and say that how disappointed they are that's how you know it's serious and i and i and i think that mike yabara was right for calling it out i think that it it is a sensationalist journalism that's going on um and uh i mean again it's th there's gaming is at a little bit of a lull right now there isn't a lot coming out i mean obviously the talk of the town is going to be dragon's dogma i see some people asking about you know with the graphic situation why is it running so poor i have to see it myself um i don't think it's i i, I mean it, it, hopefully it's it, it the day one patch it's, it's that it's ultimately going to have is going to fix everything um we'll see um but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. That 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 releases tomorrow. Are you get, are you getting draw, a Dragon's Dogma, uh, Jamie? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Like that's been on my my most buy list for like since it was announced. Okay. Yeah. See, I I played a little bit of the original. Uh, maybe about five or six hours. I enjoyed it. It was it was fun. But I wound up playing it well after it released on the Xbox 360. Like I think I might have played it on the Xbox uh, through back compat uh, back compat. Um. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty good. And then when they announced a new one, I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm definitely going to have to get back to it, which, of course, you know, I never did because my backlog is ridiculous and I don't have that much time uh, in, in, in a day. Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, JB1521 uh, says, uh, Colin on his show said, journalists are still scared to talk negative about Sony. Oh, that, that's a fact. Um I mean, all you got to do is just read the room. Some some places like, for instance, PC Gamer, you know, the, which, of course, is the subject matter here, along with uh, like IGN. Well, 40 plus percent of their ad rev is from Sony. Right. So are they going to go out and talk negative about Sony? If even though there is a reason to do so, and Sony does something that they poop the bed, so to speak, they're going to be like, eh, it, you know, like this, because they don't want to get their ad rev uh, damaged. They don't want to get out. They don't want to get, uh, you know, uh, blackballed, if you will, or banned from getting games. Um, I, I, again, it's it's they're not they're, they're never going to hurt their money. Uh, and if that means not telling the truth and speaking about what's going on. And when they do talk about Sony, if you've ever noticed, Jamie, they kind of they kind of walk around it a little bit. They, they, they don't go right at it like they would Xbox Xbox crap. Uh, Sony, like, well, you know, Sony could have done better, but maybe they'll do better the next time. But it's okay. It's Sony market leader. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Illegal Dad says it's all about that ad revenue. It is. Listen, I, I'm not a boob, folks. I understand that this is a money making game, right? You know, they, they're here to make money. There's investors. There's people. There's people that have jobs. They have to pay the insurance. They have to, you know, keep the lights on, so to speak. But yeah, journalism has gotten very sensational, uh, and unfortunately, um, I don't see that going away. And it's interesting, Jamie, um, even if Xbox has one of the best years in platform history, like I think they're going to. I think Indiana Jones is going to score well. Avowed is going to be amazing. I think the Hellblade is going to be 
game of the year conversation. I think uh, Towerborn is going to surprise a lot of people. They have a lot going on. And even with all of that greatness, you know, doing great on first party, they have amazing service and game pass. Uh, I, I, I still don't think there's going to be a time where we're going to see people talking positive about, in the media about play, uh, about Xbox, uh, even, even if they're doing better than PlayStation. Final thoughts on that. I think like we all can say like Microsoft, they're going to have a good year. They have, you know, Hellblade, Avowed, Indiana Jones, Towerborn, uh, Fight Sim 2024, Age of Mythology. There's also going to be more games coming out this year by Xbox that haven't been announced yet. So like it's if you compare it to last year, like this year is going to be way better. And I thought last year was great. Uh, so, but I think no matter what Microsoft put out, it's always going to be like everything's going to be put against Xbox. Like you said, the, the whole PlayStation thing and how like journalists like they don't go at PlayStation because they're worried about maybe not getting review copies. And we've seen this in the past. I, I think it was someone from GameSpot uh, gave The Last of Us a lower score. I think they gave it a seven, and that person got fired. And whoa, I did not know about that. Yeah, and this was like back in the day, and I think like like people have heard that Sony have like blacklisted certain outlets before. But like Microsoft, like Microsoft, they they get all of the heat. So despite I put it like this, Microsoft, they have a great year ahead, but they are in the news for negative reasons. They are the company that's quote unquote going third party. Yet Sony, they uh they they got to stop me. Well, they they slowing down development of VR headsets. The VR headset, which costs more than the console itself, they shut down multiple studios. They shut down studios that are working on VR games. They closed uh game development down on certain titles multiple games cancelled none of that's been talked about it's what's been talked about oh yeah hi-fi rush finally on playstation pentiment finally on playstation it's none of that playstation stuff like i think more than the playstation fan fan base they, they get coddled by the the journalists like there's no negative stuff talked about playstation that much because like let's be honest that they can be pretty like harsh towards people but like everything xbox gets turned into something negative like <laughs> indiana jones gets announced in january right and it looks fantastic and what does the game industry start talking about motion sickness and do you know who didn't get motion sickness everyone talking about sea of thieves on playstation yes I, I, you know what jamie this is why i love i love working with you the great phenomenal points and, and again relative to our conversation this just happened. I forgot about the whole motion sickness thing. We can't play it in first person because we're going to get sick to our stomachs. But yet, Sea of Thieves, which has actual water physics that could potentially make you seasick if you actually stare into the screen as the, as the boat is going up and down, no problems with that. It's pretty funny. It, it is pretty funny. Yeah, and like, look at High Five Rush, right? Excellent game. Excellent game. It was one of the most polished games I've ever played. And what have I seen this past week? Oh, when it came, like, I'm like across the board, I'm seeing people talk about how it was buggy at launch. Hell, someone replied to one of my posts yesterday saying how the game wasn't fixed until seasons later. What seasons are you talking about? Like, people like to push this forced narrative that everything about Xbox is negative in some way. And like, I, I hate the fact I have to say this because it sounds like I'm taking crazy pills and I'm wearing a tinfoil hat. But all you have to do is ha open your eyeballs and look. And it's like, it's so forced in your face. Yeah. Like, I, I, all I have to do is open Twitter and just scroll once and I'll say something negative. You know, like, again, I'm still shocked about like, none of these media outlets are talking about the, the motion sickness thing. What you in Sea of Thieves, you're on a boat. On a moving ocean, <laughs> in first person, and what's this? Oh yeah, no motion sickness. But Indiana Jones, you know that that's let's, let's make that an issue. Like it, it's crazy, man. And we're gonna see this continue, and it's a shame. Yeah, it it, it, it definitely is. You know, listen, it's it is what it is. You know, put put, put them on the pain of mind list and just keep it moving. But again, I I, I do think that uh, as as content creators, regardless of your size of your channel, regardless of uh, you know of, of of how many people you know in the industry, I do think that there's there there is good reason to talk about it to kind of call it out or you know like in some circles call it to the carpet 
and uh, and let people know because if we if you put your head in the sand, it's going to continue. And again, this is you know we don't owe any loyalty to Microsoft. We we like our brand. We like you know I'm an Xbox first guy. I don't make an apology for it. Um, but I do like PlayStation as well. I just don't play there as much because they don't have a lot of the games. That, that's my exclusive console. Just like Nintendo is my exclusive console. Now, don't get me wrong. I do double dip on on Switch because of the handheld aspect of it. I can play a game like Vampire Survivor sitting on a couch where Mrs. Boom and I are watching some of the are uh, you know uh, I'm watching a film or something. Um, and I and I, I don't mind doing that. I wouldn't do that for Sony. Sony is my exclusive box, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I think we should call it out when we see it. I think that. Uh, you don't have to be ridiculous about it, but I think that you can call it out, be fair, have a good conversation like Jamie and I just had, and uh, and you know, and 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 and, you know, and again, let the powers that be know that that's unacceptable behavior. Um, so let me move this footage over to some uh, Forza, and uh, hey, hey, let me uh, let me catch up on some of the super chats and the channel memberships here. We have Michael Mooney. Drops a very generous five pound super chat. Michael, thank you so much for being here, brother, and thank you for the generosity. He says, So, F, uh, S, FSR 3.1 is rolling out to Xbox games starting later this year, hopefully, killing the need for the mid gen hardware. I, dude, there's a, I mean, there's a lot that they're going to be doing. I mean, there's still the machine learning that they've been talking about for a while. I think you're going to see a lot of that come to fruition. But I think where you're really going to see this machine take off is when we, in May, we get uh, Hellblade 2. Hell, I mean, obviously, just uh, if you remember the screens that were just dropped by Ninja, uh, by Ninja Theory, those look crazy good. And that is in engine game. That's gameplay. Um, I, I think we're going to be, I think everyone is going to be incredibly impressed with this, especially if you're rocking. I mean, if you're on PC and you have a monster, uh, you know, a uh, uh, monster uh, box, you know, if you have like a 40, if you're rocking a 49, that game is going to melt your eyebrows right off your face. Um, but for console players like me who don't play on PC, you're going to get the best version on a Series X. I'm, I'm, I'm totally looking forward to it. Um, you know what? I actually put the wrong footage here, folks. It was just a video clip of this. Uh, of, I don't know why I did that. Hold. Let, let me just change the footage. Hold on just a second. I was wondering why I didn't recognize that race, and it was the the uh, the Maple Valley uh, short that I wound up doing. Hold on just a second. Let me uh, let me get some better footage out here. Where is my Forza? Hold on just a second. I'll tell you. Okay, this is that's okay. So here we go. Uh, pardon the sound for a second. I'm gonna shut it off right here okay there you go um so i want to move on to the next topic but let me just read the last two uh member chats here first of all N nino vistic has gifted a uh, one double barrel gaming membership brother that is crazy generous of you thank you for that if you did get the the sub from nino vistic please uh give him a thank you in the chat we super appreciate the generosity brother uh we also have torino johnson who's been a channel member for six months Reno, great to have you here, brother, and thank you so much for the support. He says, still enjoying Starfield. Why, uh, while I play Pentiment, uh, I'm level 161. He has 79 days, one hours, and 10 minutes in with all of my powers at level 10. Uh, ran the Red Mile 33 times. Wow, dude. Like, let's see, again, I, so many people. I, I ran through it once. I did want to do multiple playthroughs. But I, I just don't have the time. There's so many games that I really want to get into. But I, I loved every bit of Starfield. I put, I mean, it's a minuscule to other people. I put over five days into it. I know people are like, oh, my God, five days. That's not even a lot. It, you know, there's a lot of games. Last year, there were a lot of games. I, I support all three consoles. So, of course, my time is split. Um, but when that new DLC drops, Shattered Space, oh, I'm going to be right back to it. I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to that. Um, we also have a oh we got Hargi Chani. Hey brother, welcome. Hopefully you're enjoying Boston. He drops, folks, a very generous five dollar super chat and says, Miss yesterday's discussion. Bungie's future not looking so good. Sad face. More problems for PlayStation, but I guess Xbox is the one that is folding 
hashtag Xbox tax. Indeed. I mean, listen, folks, I, 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 Hargeet is right there with me. We're going to, we're going to bang the lunatic drum and say that there is Xbox tax. And I'm not, I'm not going to ever give that up. I'm sorry. I just think that there is. And every day that we do this shenanigans with the, with, you know, with the podcasting and the social media, you see it, but Jamie, we got about another 15 or 20 minutes left. We got to talk Elder Scrolls 4 remake because um, this is something. Now, you, you're wondering, why did I talk about this today? Well, obviously, news is, is, is kind of shrinking a bit. So you got to sometimes as a host, you know, drum up some good conversation. And I think this is going to be a good one. So as I was scrolling through social media yesterday, Jamie, I realized that Bethesda had put out a tweet uh, celebrating the 18th anniversary of Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Um, and it, I think that, again, you know, depending on who, who you ask or when you started gaming, I don't know about so much about you folks and you, Jamie. I spent so much time in Oblivion. It was ridiculous. I still have the collector's edition with the gold coin and the cloth map in storage in mint condition. I absolutely loved everything about Oblivion. Now, granted, it probably doesn't hold up that great now. But if they're doing a remake, man, Jamie, I am all here for it. Now, let's see. Um, what do I have on Oblivion? Okay, so I have the tweet. Uh, it is the load screen uh, uh, that that you know that 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 Bethesda tweeted. It says this journey through uh, uh, Tamarel uh, has held a special place for us. A very happy anniversary to the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion and the 18 years we've adventured together. Um, and just talking about it, folks, because I'm a nerd, I got goosebumps because I remember the first, you know, DLC, uh, buying the horse armor and getting railroaded by my brother. I can't believe you bought that. That's ridiculous. Five dollars. What a waste. And, you know, I was probably one of the problems that caused DLC to be a thing. But I bought the horse armor. I'm not sorry that I did. because I wanted my horse to look different than everybody else's. It's crazy. But I bought it. Um, Jamie, I pulled a story from uh, uh, Game Rant. Now, this story is its a little older. Uh, it, it was posted last year, July 31st, 2023. It was written by Dominic Bo, uh, Bos, Bosjak. Um, and again, it's a little older story. We haven't heard much about the remake. We know that, you know, they're, they're, supposedly the rumor, Jamie, is that the Oblivion, uh, the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion is getting a remake, uh, and so is um, Fallout 3. But we're not going to talk about Fallout 3 because, well, we're here to talk about Oblivion. Um, now, according to the story, it says, rumor suggests that the remake or remaster of the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion may be in development, although Bethesda has not confirmed this, and is focused on completing Starfield. Now, obviously, this is before Starfield released. Virtuous, an international studio specializing in remakes, is reported to be working on an updated version of Oblivion code named Altar, uh, 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 which may release in late 2024 or as uh, or, or, or late 2024 or early 2025. Um, now, the leaked roadmap for Virtuous shared by an ex-employee also reveals other projects in development, including a narrative climbing game, the next world, uh, the next New World expansion, and an ambitious AAA game, as well as the Metal Gear Solid Delta uh, release. Um, Jamie, this is this is one of those games that when you think about as many remakes as there has been. And there's been some really phenomenal ones, and there's been some really shitty ones. You mentioned Star Wars Battlefront. I got stuck with it because I had returned two games before. They didn't give me a refund, so I spent the 40 bucks, and now I'm stuck with it. Um, and that sucks. I'm hoping that they do get it fixed at some point. Um, what 
Do you think that there is a place, especially in modern age gaming, to see a remake of Oblivion when we are potentially years away from a new Elder Scrolls? I want to say that we're at least minimum two years, because I'm thinking maybe maybe they kind of put the pedal to the metal and the Elder Scrolls 6 is a launch title for the new Xbox hardware, which I think would be dope, but I think that is kind of dreaming a bit do you want to see a full-fledged oblivion remake oh yeah <laughs> oblivion is one of my favorite games of all time it, like back on 360 like stepping out of the the dungeon for the first time in the open world that was like one of those next gen like experiences on 360 because it it looked way better than morrowind back in the day <laughs> and like even though you can play it at 4k 60 at the minute and even though microsoft has all these other games in development they still have room to put like remasters or remakes out throughout the year because like one of the one of the reasons p- people make fun of playstation for the whole remakes and remasters thing is that there's too much emphasis on those things but microsoft this year you can tell they've got a roadmap but i think that if they if they have their games they already have announced now and they put like remasters or remakes out in between you're going to be getting six to eight games a year from them which is yes. bloody great and like, look, Elder Scrolls is years away. And like you said, I, I've been theorizing this for like a year now. Like, I think the next Elder, Elder Scrolls game is a next-gen launch window title or a launch title. And like again, 2026, that's still years away. I think there's space for an Oblivion remake or remaster. And I'm looking at the list now, by the way, that leaks. And this is a real list. And all these other titles have been announced for this year. So Indiana Jones, already announced for this year. Elder Scrolls Online Expansion, already announced coming this year starfield dlc already announced coming this year the only thing on this list by bethesda that hasn't been announced yet is the oblivion remake and think about like uh, so in in various documents i've seen this listed as a remake and a remaster so we don't know what we're really going to get but if you look at how oblivion gates work back on 360 you step through an oblivion gate you got a loading screen and then you're in you know the hell basically well now with ssds you would have instant loading so you would literally step into the gate but we, we have had bad remasters over the years and bad remakes and the star wars battlefront thing like i got a review copy and even i felt duped <laughs> right uh like uh that was a horrendous experience and i i i said in my review on my podcast like I can't recommend it to people because it's in such bad state. Uh, but over the years, we've had good remasters as well, like Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which I will praise every single day for the rest of my life. Uh, and that they did a great job. Dead Space Remake, phenomenal. So like, it just depends who's doing it, how much effort's been put into it. Uh, depending on the studio, I'm sure they'll do a good job. But I think it like you have all these like Starfield fans at the minute. Like they, they're waiting for the DLC, or maybe they want to move on to another RPG in Oblivion. It came out so long ago now that there's a whole generation of gamers that just haven't played it. And if you give it a new coat of paint, like if you play that game now, that came out in the generation where you don't have grass in a forest, you have a green texture. <laughs> so uh, it's a bit weird. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah it's, it's a it's a bit weird walking around. Uh, so like if they could like make it modern, that'd be great. Uh, and honestly, I think that's going to be one of the major games announced for this year at Microsoft Summer Showcase. I think it's going to release in the summer, like shortly after the A3 Showcase, whatever it's going to be called. Uh, but there's definitely a one for it. And like we're probably going to see some Gears stuff and remasters and what whatnot. But I think Microsoft have so many new games coming out that they can afford to have these remakes and remasters come out as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think there there is room for... I mean, I, and that's the thing that's pretty cool right like with game pass you don't need to sell a million copies of said game or 10 million copies of said game for it to be successful the one thing the advantage of something like an oblivion remake or a remaster however you want to put it that's going to drop right into uh your service now what's interesting jamie and here I, this is another question to add to the conversation is is this a game be, uh, that they're going to keep to themselves, or do you see this game releasing on a PlayStation 5 as well? Maybe even a Switch, for that matter. Uh, so <laughs> this is a bit of a weird answer. Uh, 
I think Oblivion might be exclusive, but I think the Fallout one will be multi-platform. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Year. That makes sense. That makes uh, sense. Just because you know the Fallout shows coming out soon, that's going to be huge. Uh, it really just depends on like when they started development, what the contracts are like. But like, I will say this: even though this is going to be a remaster or remake, and it's an old game, which we've all a lot of us have played. If this is multi-platform, we're going to see non-stop hell space on Twitter for weeks. <laughs> um, but I, I think either way, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's like the Oblivion remake or remaster. As much as I want to play it, as much as you want to play it, I don't see that as a system seller. I just think it is it as a another experience to have. It's going to be one of those games that you put in Game Pass, which they'll market and all that stuff. And I think people will have fun with it, but. It's 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 confusing because I now I'm thinking about it. Maybe it is multi-platform. Mm. Maybe it, because it maybe it started development before Microsoft even purchased Bethesda, and ah, we we don't know we don't know yeah, and we don't know the scale of the remake. Like, is it a full-on remake? Is it a remaster, or is it more like a Crisis Core thing where it's kind of both, where you have remade textures and assets, but it's basically the same game. We just don't know. I think it just depends on when it started development. You know, I mean, that's a well. I mean, it's a good question. Um, we don't know what was happening behind the scenes before uh, they were they they were purchased. We don't know how long this game has been in actual development. So my my hot take on this, folks, is I'm going to play this game uh, probably through completion. That's because I'm a big fan. Um, I am hoping, Jamie, that this that we saw we get a remake rather than a remaster. Um, a remake means that they have gone down to the code and you're getting like or everything new. Um, now, will it be a Resident Evil 2 Final Fantasy 7 remake uh, type of, of uh, a pr- product? I would sure hope so. And I and, and the thing is this, because Elder Scrolls 6 is not coming out for at least another two to three years and and i agree with everyone in the chat you said it people said it in the chat they think that this is going to be a launch title and it makes perfect sense um phil spencer has already said that it is going to remain exclusive well for how long we don't know but if you're launching new hardware uh and you know you have you you're the owner of bethesda you make something i mean elder scroll 6 is going to move boxes even if they even if you can play on your refrigerator, people are gonna buy a box to play this game. It is going to sell like hotcakes. It's Elder Scrolls and it's Elder Scrolls Six, but that's not coming out for another two years. If they do this right, Jamie, and we get like a full on remake, this could definitely hold off the sting of not getting anything new for. I mean, obviously, that if you like the MMO, it's there for you. That's not my bag. So that's why I haven't played it. Um, I, I wh- what are you what are you more siding with a remake to get it out or I mean a remaster to get it out or a remake let's do this right uh, I think it's both <laughs> uh, like okay. I, have, you, have you ever played uh, Crisis Core of Union no I have not okay so that game uh, for all intents and purposes is technically a remaster I'm doing air quotes but they went in okay. and uh, they gave every single character in the game voice acting. None of it's just oh. text anymore. Uh, they okay. remade all of the assets from scratch. The only thing that's the same is basically how the world's laid out, how the quests work, and like the CGI cutscenes have been upscaled. So it's it's literally a remake and a remaster at the same time. Um, gotcha. The first Mass Effect game in Legendary Edition, they remade every asset in that game. Thousands of different textures, every, but it's still the same game. Uh, look at the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake this year. I've gone over that footage frame by frame, and I can tell you that's going to be a frame-to-frame remake. Step Mm. by step, beat for beat. If you played 3, you're getting this, but it's going to be shiny in Unreal Engine 5. I think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be the the same game we love, but looking all fancy and new. I don't think it's going to be a a, a straight-up up-res, because technically we've already got that. Um, Right. But I, I don't think it's going to be the "Quote unquote Resident Evil Two style remake." Well, where yeah, it's... I mean that they literally remade the game. Like, yeah. I, I and I think I think you're I think you're onto something here. A remaster, but and a remake at the same time. Better textures, same game. I, I I like that. Yeah, and it works out because 
like when it happened with Legendary Edition and I heard that they were changing everything with one, I'm not going to lie, I was scared because <laughs> that's my favorite game of all time and I don't want them to change that, but they made it a better game, they improved gameplay elements, the UI, all that stuff, quality of life improvements. And if they do that with Oblivion, then we're going to get something fantastic. Um, but like you said, I don't think it's going to be a Resident Evil 2 or Final Fantasy 7 style remake. And personally, I don't think it needs that. I'm, I'm one of those people. I think Oblivion is better than Skyrim, just for its main story. Yeah. Um, you have the big war battles and stuff, the Oblivion gates, all that stuff. There's more dungeons. The better, there's better dungeons in Oblivion. Uh, but I think people will be happy with it. The studio that's working on it have made some really good games in the past, so I, th- I think it's going to be good. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I listen, uh, who was it that said Shivling Isles DLC was dope? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look. I mean, it, 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 I know that they said it a while back. I po- apologies that I didn't read it when it first uh, popped up, but yeah, it's, uh, it's. I mean. Look, at the end of the day, Shriveling Isles DLC, I would imagine that all DLC is going to be a part of it, which would be pretty dope, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, you know, it's... Um, look, I'm here for it. I think everyone is here for it. Um, it's going to be in Game Pass. Um, it's going to be available day one when it drops. Again, one of those uh, things that we opened up the show with, Game Pass being a, a service... I don't know how you're you're a gamer and you don't have it. Uh, again, I, may, maybe it's a finance thing. And I'm not going to fight you on it. The world kind of sucks right now for everybody. It's not just you know one or two people. The world sucks and everything's expensive. But the thing about Game Pass, it does for sixteen sixteen ninety nine a month. You you are getting a ridiculous deal. And this is going to be one of those games going right in there. I hope it's released. Um, I think you're onto something for June. It would be a big draw right along with something like the Marcus Phoenix collection that I'm expecting to be dropped. As a matter of fact, I expect it not only to be announced, but shadow dropped. And that's, that is nothing I heard That is complete speculation on my part. Um, I would love to see gears one, two, and three in unreal engine five. I think most people would as well. That would be huge. And again, you get an oblivion drop, you get in a gears drop, or you or, or announcement and a drop. It would listen. This June is going to be crazy, and I'm looking forward to it. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today's show. This is obviously one of the smaller shows that I do. Uh, it's one on one. Usually, it's just me and C Money, but we do have a you know obviously he is not here, so we had you know I had to bring in a co-host. Jamie, I want to help you sell your brand, but before we do that, let me thank everybody in the chat for being here. We had well over 600 people. That is absolutely amazing. If you're finding the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. Hitting the bell icon so you know I when I ever whenever I go live and of course while you're still here, consider hitting the uh, the the uh, the thumbs up button because it does really help with this ridiculous algorithm known as YouTube. I truly would appreciate it. Um, and let me just make sure I'm caught up on all the super chats. Yes, we are caught up on all super chats and all channel messages. Uh, Jamie, please by all means sell your brand, kind sir. Tell everyone where they can check out your YouTube channel, subscribe, what you got going on with it, and more importantly, follow you on social media. Yeah, thanks for having us on the show again, Boom. Always a pleasure. Um, but yeah, my my YouTube is The Elusive Gamer, where I, I, I mainly post about Xbox. Uh, like you said, the, the YouTube algorithm isn't great. Uh, I post about upcoming games coming to xbox and that stuff every month i have a podcast every tuesday called all things xbox podcast and i literally keep everything on the channel basically just about xbox there's no fanboy stuff and all that stuff uh so if people want to support the channel just subscribe it's good uh and on twitter i'm jamie moran uk where i cover everything gaming and the occasional joker too and and you do you do some funny ones out there especially when you (laughs) When you tweet about the Arkham Asylum uh, yeah. inmates <laughs> following you, that is hilarious. And yes, they do. He, it's, it's honestly, it is funny, but it's sad. Yeah. He puts <laughs> out a tweet that says, "Oh, I'm excited about Indiana Jones," and that's the tweet. And he gets some really heinous like replies. And when he puts it out there, he always says, "Oh, the Arkham, the Arkham Asylum inmates, they got out again." And it is, it is hilarious, but. Um, don't hate monger, folks. This world is terrible. Don't be a part of the problem, be a part of the solution. Be happy. 
be go lucky, you know, be positive. That's what we do here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in for today's show. Hopefully you had enough, a lot of fun we did. Uh, obviously, tomorrow there is one more show left for the week. Breakfast of Boom tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe Infinite Umbra is going to be joining the crew. I have a whole uh, positive Xbox conversation to be had about some of the things that uh, that Jez Corden of Windows Central and, of course, the Xbox 2 said recently. And, you know, Jez is really sneaky. Like, he says subtle things, and it goes over a lot of people's heads. And then when you see him and you sit back and you're like, well, let me see what Jez had to say. Oh, there's something here. You'll hear about that tomorrow. Plus, whatever else is going to happen, because remember, the rest of the day is it's only 1.15, so who knows what's going to happen. But a big thank you to all of the Super Chats, all of the channel members that continue to support us. Uh, of course, Nino Vistic, thank you so much for uh, for giving one of the, uh, the uh, you know, one sub away. We super appreciate that here. And of course, folks, I'm going to close out today's show with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully one day be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he would say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of X Vlog Live. Yeah.